Hi guys. Okay, so now we are continuing with chapter three of um, the OpenStax book, chemistry book, second edition. And this is on the substances and the solution. And here we are looking at the learning check problems, 3.9 to 3.13 that relate to percentages, uh, composition, uh, molecular formula, and the empirical formula and how to find that. Okay, so first of all, the problem 3.9, and that is a learning check problem 3.9, which is on page um, page 345, 300, page 345. Okay, so here we are given 24.81 gram sample of a gaseous compound. So write down the total given. So we are given um, 28, 24, 0.81 grams sample of a compound, gaseous compound that contains carbon, oxygen, and chlorine, okay? And is determined to contain three, so the carbon is 3.01 grams, um, 4.00 grams is oxygen, 4.00 grams oxygen, and 17.81, 17.81 grams of chlorine. What is the compound's percentage composition? So in other words, we need to find out what percentage is carbon, what percentage is oxygen, and what is the percentage of chlorine, okay? So basically it's a parts to whole problem so how do we set this up we set up so write down the formula so small part over the whole times 100 okay so what is the percentage of so let's write this down put it up this way percentage of carbon is equal to the total grams that is given to you so you are given 3.01 grams of carbon over the total sample. And the total sample is 24.81 grams, okay? And that's times 100, okay? And that's going to give you the percentage of carbon. So that's 100%. Next is the percentage of oxygen. Percentage of oxygen is 4.00 grams. Divide that by the total 24.81 uh, grams. So this is the grams of carbon. This is the grams of oxygen. And that is the sample. So it's always best to write down, you know, what is the, um, the units and like the, in what context those numbers are being used. So here is the percentage of oxygen. Next is the percentage of chlorine. The percentage of chlorine is 17.81 grams of chlorine over 24.81 grams of sample times 100%. Okay, and so let's do the math. Okay, so here you get, when you do the math, you get 12.13% um, of carbon, 16.12% is oxygen, and 71.78% is the uh, chlorine. So best to write down oxygen and chlorine. Okay. So parts to whole problem and you do it this way. You set it up this way. Okay. Let's look at the next problem, which is 3.10. And that is two, three significant figures, 3.10. And that is on page um, 146. I'm sorry. This was a one. I don't know what 145. This one was 145. Sorry about that. And this one is 3.10. And that is on page uh, 146. Okay, here to three significant figures. Now the question is clearly asking you to get the answer in three significant figures. What is the mass percentage of iron? So mass percent of iron in Fe2O3, Fe2O3. Now, in this case, we are not given the grams of the sample. So what are we going to do? We are going to find the molar mass 
or this is also called the molecular uh, molecular mass molecular or or, or sorry that actually this is an ionic compound so it's the formula mass so whatever you know entity is given to you molecular would apply to covalent and the um, a formula applies to ionic Okay, so find the, um, you know, the, the mass, the molecular or the formula mass of the given entity, which is Fe to O3 in this case. So here, this means that there are two irons and there are three oxygens. Okay, so let's get the weight from the periodic table. From the periodic table, get the mass number of iron and of oxygen. So let's do that. Okay, so iron is 56 and oxygen is 16. And it's okay to round up here. So, um, okay, so we see that when you do the math, 50, 56 times 2 and 16 times 3, you get um, a total of 160 grams per mole or uh, 160 um, atomic mass unit. So now we are trying to find out how much of the iron is there. So there are two of irons, right? So two atoms of iron, like that is an old, old way of saying was that two atoms. But another way of saying is that two moles of iron are present in one mole of Fe2O3. Okay. Another way of saying is two atoms of iron are present in, now that's an older method, are present in one molecule of, one molecule of Fe2O3. So here uh, we need to find out the grams. So we see that 112 grams are present in 160. The total weight is 160. So we see here 112 grams of iron is present in 160 grams sample of Fe2O3. Okay, that's the total, 160. That's the molar mass of that. So, uh, and times 100%. So what do you get here? Let's do the math. Okay, so when you do the math here, you get um, 70%. Now the question has asked for three significant figures. Now, one option is, because now we get only two significant figures, right? So we have to do something. Now here, either you do not round up here and you take up the exact numbers. So this was 55 point, um, instead of 56, it, you could take 55.86 and go from there. And this, this was 50, 15.99. So take the exact numbers, you could do that. Or if you do get like a situation where you get this 70%, you can clearly do it like 70.0%. So that means it's that, that exact, that much amount. So technically, if you do it, if you do not round this up here, if you do not, so here, let me write this down. If you um, do not round up, if you, do not round up here because you know we are used to doing it so anyways if you do not round up here then the answer is more exact it's 69.9 percent okay and then that's that's the percentage of iron that is present in fe203 okay and that is the person that is iron in Fe203. So yeah, 69.9 is a bit more exact, but out of habit, we generally round up the numbers, you know, from the periodic table. So that's why I rounded it up in the initial stage here, but it's okay. Anyways, let's look at the next number, next question, which is 3.11. Okay. Okay. So 3.11 on page, um, actually it is one, 48, 148. On page 148, what is the empirical formula of a compound? So we are finding the empirical formula of the compound. Um, 
What is the empirical formula of a compound if a sample contains 0 0.130 grams of nitrogen? Okay, this is nitrogen. And 0 0.3. Seven zero grams of oxygen. So, what is the empirical formula? Okay, so there is a strategy that we follow, and I'm going to write that strategy so you can use that. Okay, so this is the strategy you see you are given two atoms here nitrogen and oxygen. So general st uh, strategy is you take the grams of, um, you know, uh, whatever atom is given to you and then the other grams. Okay. So you take those two grams, convert them to moles. And when you convert the grams to moles, we covered it in the previous, you know, um, thing, that, which is grams to moles is using the molar mass. So for the molar mass, um, you are going to look at the periodic table and you're going to get the mass number of those atoms. So same is the case here, molar mass. And so molar mass is just capital M, okay? So whatever moles you get, you're going to divide by the lowest number of moles, whichever either A or B, whichever gets the lowest moles, you divide uh, by the lowest moles. That way you're going to get a, a whole number H ratio, okay? Once you get the whole number ratio, um, the, the, you get the ratio of the of the two. You have to convert it into the lo, uh, a whole number. So for that, you will have to multiply by some you know common multiple. So you get like a, um, like a like a whole number. In case like if it's one point five, you multiply by two, and so it becomes like three and so forth. Okay, so let's look at now this problem. We we have zero. 0 0.130 grams of nitrogen, right? When you convert it into moles, so what do you do? You are going to take one mole because we need the moles. One mole of nitrogen will be on the top. And here at the bottom is the, um, for the nitrogen alone, if you look in the periodic table, the nitrogen alone uh, has 14.01. So it's 14.01 grams of nitrogen, okay? So this is going to give you the moles of nitrogen. Now let's look at the oxygen, 0 0.370 oxygen. So 0 0.370 grams of oxygen multiply by one mole of oxygen over. Now the oxygen here is 16 or let's just put it here, 15.99 grams of oxygen. And that's going to give you the moles of oxygen. So let's do the math. Okay, so when you do the math, you get some numbers from the periodic table, from the, sorry, you get some numbers on your calculator. Now you look at it here. You have three significant figures, right? This is the four significant figures, but three significant figures there, three significant figures here, four significant figures here. So here, you are going to bring in the three significant figures, okay? Three, three significant figures here. These are four significant figures, four significant figures. And here is the three significant figures and three significant figures. Now, here's the important part. Do not round up, okay? Do not round up. So note down the numbers as is from the calculator. Note the numbers as is from the calculator. Okay. So, all right. So we at least got the three significant figures. Now the next, this was our first step. The next step is mole to mole ratio. The first one was converting the, let me write this down here the um the this is the converting the grams to moles the next is mole to mole ratio mole to mole ratio okay so how do you do that you're going to look at the lowest moles so we see the lowest ones are of nitrogen so we're going to take 0 
zero nine two seven. Okay, that's that's for the nitrogen. Divide that by zero point zero zero nine two seven, and that's for the nitrogen, and that comes out to be one. Okay, now next is the oxygen. So zero point zero two three one. Divide that by zero point zero zero nine two seven. Okay, and that is for the oxygen. And when you do that, this comes out to be. Um, okay, so this comes out to be 2.49. So there is for every one. So this is basically for every one nitrogen, there are oxygens are 2.49. So as we know, we cannot have half of the half of them. So that is why we will have to multiply this whole thing by two, multiply by two, so that we may get N2O5. Now that is simplest whole number ratio. So instead of these, so this piece right here, you will have to, you know, um, you know, make it a whole number, okay, by multiplying by two. Make this a whole number. And this can also be 2.5. This can also be written as 2.50. It's okay to round up here, okay? But even with that, we have to make it into. So this is the N2O5. This is the empirical formula, the simplest formula for this compound. Okay, let's look at the next one. So we are given in 3.12 on page 150, 150, we are given uh, this question. They're asking us find the empirical formula of this compound, um, which contains, okay, 40%. So carbon is 40.0%, okay? Hydrogen is 6.71%. Hydrogen is 6.71%. And oxygen is 53.28%. Oxygen is 53.28%. 53 Okay, so here, what are you going to do? Now, when this is given, this means, this percentage, this means, this, this is given to you. These things are given. And what do they mean? This means that 40, let me write this down. This is given, but this means... This means, and this also, this means that, um, let's put this in a this means 40.0 grams of carbon is present in 100 grams of, 100 grams of sample, 100 grams sample, okay? This means six, 0.71 grams of hydrogen is present in 100 grams of sample. Okay, and this means 53.28 grams of oxygen is present in 100 grams of sample. Okay, so now we got the grams. What are we going to do next? Same story. You go, You take the percentage. I'm going to write this here. Convert that to grams. Convert the grams to moles. Then do the mole to mole ratio. Okay, mole to mole ratio. And this mole to mole ratio is the, the guy that's on the denominator is the one with the lower, lowest moles is going to be in the denominator. Okay, then you get whatever number you get convert that into the simplest whole number or the lowest whole number. So whatever ratio you get here, whatever number you get here, if this number is not a whole number, then you convert it into a whole number by multiplying. So let's put this here. If, sorry, if this number is not a whole number, then multiply to make 
a whole number. Okay, so and then after that, that gives you the empirical formula. This whole thing then after that, you know, will become the empirical formula. So this is a strategy we follow for each for each atom or rather, you know, element. Okay, so let's do this now. So we already got, we already did the first part, converted the grams to, converted the percentages to grams. So now we have 40.0 grams of carbon, convert that to moles. So we have one mole of carbon and that is weighing, 12 point, I just want to be, bring the exact numbers here. So that is 12.01, 12 12.01 12 grams of carbon. Okay. So that's going to give you the certain moles of carbon. Same way you take hydrogen. So 6.71 grams of hydrogen, multiply that by one mole of hydrogen, one mole of hydrogen over the hydrogen is 1.001.008 grams of hydrogen okay and this gives you the moles of hydrogen moles of hydrogen okay and then you have 53.28 53.28 grams of oxygen multiply this by one mole of oxygen over the oxygen is 15.99 grams of oxygen and this information all this you're getting from the, the these are the mass numbers you're getting from the periodic table and here this gives you the moles of oxygen so let's do the math okay so we get here when we do the multiplication so um multiplication of the division so moles so here we have three significant figures so we get the answer three significant figures we pick up the three numbers from the calculator similarly here three significant figures the answer should be three significant figures this is the four significant figures and the other one is also four significant figures so the answer here when i picked up it was three three two but you know, for now, because we were doing the mole ratios and then after that, we are going to round, rounding up a little bit. So I left that two out. So we will just keep two places after the decimal for the sake of uniformity. So we get now the moles of carbon, the moles of hydrogen and the moles of oxygen. And we see that 3.33 is the lowest number. So for carbon, 3.33 divided by 3.33. For hydrogen, 6.65, divide that by 3.33. And oxygen, 3.33, divide that by 3.33. So what do you get here? We get, in this case, carbon is equal to 1. Hydrogen is equal to, comes out to be uh, 1.99. So, you know, you can round up here, make it 2. Okay, and oxygen is one. So the empirical formula in this case, the empirical formula is the lowest whole number ratio. And that is C is carbon one. We don't write for one, but hydrogen is two and oxygen is one. So, um, so do not write one, you know, in this, in this, you know, for the formulas but it's only above two, okay? So that is the answer, CH2O. I mean, that's the very simplest whole number ratio. Okay, so now here we are given another question, 3.13, they find the molecular formula. You take the percentages if they are given to you, convert them to grams. So convert the grams to moles, okay? And that is using the molar mass. Now, Take the moles and do mole to mole ratio, okay? With the lowest moles, obviously. Once you get that mole to mole ratio, um, just make it into a, the simplest whole number. The simplest whole number can be done. If, if it is not a simplest whole number, then you have to multiply by some number, okay? Simplest whole number, and then that gives you the empirical formula. Okay, now we are moving to the next step, which is finding the molecular formula. So what do we do? We have here the molar, the, the, we need to find. So here's the thing, empirical formula 
times some number is equal to the molecular formula. And what is this N number? N molecular formula mass. Okay, over the empirical formula <clears throat> mass. So whatever number you get, that is the N number. And that N is the number that defines, you know, when you get the empirical formula, you multiply that by that particular number, every single element. And then that gives you the molecular formula. So make a note of this. This is very important. Once you get the empirical formula, um, you have to calculate on your own. Calculate from your side. Okay. But this generally is given. And this we can get from, you know, from different analytical techniques. All right. So here we have problem 3.13. What is the molecular formula? of a compound with a percentage composition. So you are given these percentages. And as we know that we can convert these percentages into the, um, these, uh, these percentages actually translate into the grams. So they are a part like, let's say if the sample is 100 grams, then 49.47 grams is carbon, 5.201, grams is hydrogen and 28.84 grams is nitrogen and 16.48 grams is oxygen. Okay, now same thing. Let's convert this to, uh, to moles. So 49.47 grams carbon, times one mole of carbon over 12.01 grams of carbon. Next is 5.201 grams of hydrogen times one mole of hydrogen over 1.008 grams of hydrogen. And then you have the other one, 28.84 grams nitrogen times one mole of nitrogen over, um, I think it was exactly 14 point, one second. It is nitrogen is 14.01 14 14 grams of nitrogen and the last is 16.48 i'm going to put this here a little bit lower 16.48 grams of um oxygen okay times one mole of oxygen over over um 15.99 grams of oxygen okay now let us let us uh, let us do the let's get the moles okay okay so here we see that um, the the grams of carbon we converted to moles we get four point one one nine so you know I'm just using trying to use a significant figure so four significant figures here so we get four numbers here four significant figures here we have um one two three four four significant figures this one is also four so five point uh one five nine four significant figures here we have four significant figures and four here so again four significant figures four point zero five eight and so do not round up any time this time here. And then 6.48 divided by 15.99, you get 1.030 because this is uh, four significant figures, okay? So you get all these moles. Next is the mole to mole ratio. So mole to mole ratio. Okay, so in this mole to mole ratio, we see which one is the lowest. 
So we see the oxygen is the lowest. Okay, so this is the guy. So we are going to take carbon and divide that by oxygen. You're going to take hydrogen and you're going to divide that by oxygen. You're going to take nitrogen and you're going to divide that by oxygen. And you're going to take oxygen and divide that by oxygen. Okay, so 4.119 divide by 1.030. That's for carbon. Hydrogen is 5.159, divide that by 1.030. Uh, nitrogen is 2.058, divide by 1.030. And the other one is 1.030, divide by 1.030. Okay, so you get this. Okay, now we have, um, in this case, now let's let's do the math here. Okay, so when we get this uh, division, so we see that now it's just two places after the decimal is fine. So here we have um, five, uh, for, in the first one for the carbon, we get 3.99. Second one for hydrogen, we get five. For nitrogen, we get 1.99 and for oxygen, it's one. Okay, so here we will have to like, uh, make it four. It's okay to round up. So this is five and this is two and this is one. So remember getting the simplest whole number ratio. So round up to get simplest whole number here. Okay. So what do we get now? So carbon is four. Okay. Hydrogen is five. Ox nitrogen is two and oxygen is just one. So what does the empirical formula become? The empirical formula is C4H5N2O. Okay, and for one, we don't write. So it is C4, um, C4H5N2O. Uh, so this is the empirical formula. But the question is asking for the molecular formula. And the molecular mass they have given is the given molecular mass, and I didn't write it here, but the given, and this is um, given molar mass or the molecular mass or mol uh, is molar mass is equal to 194, 194.2 atomic mass units. Okay, so now let's get the uh, now, first thing is that uh, in order to do that, remember, you need to get the value of N. N is the molar mass over, that is given to you, over the empirical formula mass, empirical formula mass, okay? And once you get that, you take the empirical formula and you put the value of N and that is going to give you the molecular formula. So these are your two very important formulas that we are going to use. So please make a note of these, okay? This and this one. All right, so now let's do the first thing is that we need the empirical formula mass. So empirical formula, like the molar mass for empirical form coming from the empirical formula, and that is four of carbons, each is 12 grams, and here you get um, 48 grams of carbon coming from carbon, and then um, there are five of hydrogens, and each is one, and you get five grams of hydrogen. Then there are two nitrogens, and each is 14, and you get 28 grams from nitrogen, and you have one oxygen, one of oxygen, and that is 16 from the periodic table. So this is actually grams, 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 and grams. So you get um, 16 grams coming from oxygen. And now you add all this up, and what do you get? Okay, so now you have, this is the empirical formula mass. That is 97 grams or you can also say grams per mole, or you know, uh, it's the atomic mass units, you know, those things also. So grams um, or 97 atomic mass units. 
Okay. Now, we are now going to find the value of n. So how are we going to do that? So n is equal to the given. So let me write this down here. Given, you are given the molar mass, which is equal to 194.2. 194.2 atomic mass units, okay? Or grams, same thing, okay. Anyway, so N is equal to the um, empirical, uh, sorry, the molar mass over, that is given, over the empirical formula mass, okay? So the molar mass given is 194.2. Two, divide that by 97. And what do you get here? 194.2 divide that by 97 is giving you, um, so this is basically atomic mass units, or you can just put this as grams. Um, so this comes out to be 2.00. So the value of N is 2.00. This means that the this number N is equal to 2. That means the empirical formula times 2 is going to give you the molecular formula. So our empirical formula was um, C4H5N2O. C4H5N2O. And so this, when you multiply by 2, this gives you C, 4 to the 8, H, 5 to the 10, N, 2 to the 4. And oxygen is two, 1 times 2 is 2. So this is the molecular formula. Okay. So this is the answer. All right. So that's the answer for this problem. So here we are ending uh, this section and we will start with the molarity in the next video. All right. Okay. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.